Hi, this is How to Get Your Shit Together with me, Sue Wright. So this is all about how to have a midlife crisis. And I guess the first thing is defining midlife. You know, because I was doing some research before doing this podcast. And midlife seems to have shifted somewhat. Because once upon a time it was sort of once you hit 40, that was it. Midlife, have your midlife crisis, end of story. Whereas now it seems that people sort of in their 60s are thinking it's midlife. And I'm, what, 52 at the minute? And, um, well, if I'm honest, I feel a bit of a juvenile, never mind midlife. But there you go, that's just me. So midlife crisis, okay, why you should have a midlife crisis. So midlife is kind of a bit of a changing point. You know, there's lots of statistics out there that say, you know, the majority of people in midlife are are pretty miserable because they feel they're too old to make any changes. Um, So midlife is when you kind of wake up one morning and you suddenly have a realisation that you are somewhere you didn't expect to be. And you kind of turn around and you go, what the f*** happened here? Who am I? How did I manage to turn into this person? And what the flipping heck am I going to do to get out of this crap? You know, so you, you know, you've, you know, you've just realised that actually the life you're living isn't the life you were dreaming of in your 20s, in your 30s even. And part of it comes from the fact that, you know, you kind of, you go to school, you then go to college or university, then you have to grow up and get a job, or or maybe you don't. Um, You get married or you might not. You end up in a long-term relationship. You might have kids, you might have animals. And I say animals because I, my animals are my kids. Um, and then, you know, you've been moulded into all of these different roles that you've taken on over the years. So, you know, the youthful teenager that you once were has kind of been bumped and nudged and moulded into, you know, sister, brother, you know, mum or dad, wife or husband, partner and, well, what's the well, other partner, um, auntie, uncle employer or employee yeah so you know you become you become this person unless you're very careful that everybody else thinks you should be you become their definition of what an auntie or an uncle should look like or what a wife or a husband should do and you know it dawns on you that your true self has somehow got hopelessly lost along the way And with the clients I work with, that tends to be that point where the dissatisfaction starts actually bubbling to the fore. You know, you've realised that actually you're not the person you were. You're feeling resentful for not being the person that you dreamt you would be or you were once. And, you know, you start to get grouchy with the world around you. And, you know, a lot of um, divorces, because I deal a lot with um, helping divorced women kind of get their shit together, you know, a lot of divorces come from that point where one or both of the partners has actually woken up and realised, you know, it's often if they've had kids when the kids have left home or, you know, where, where, you know, suddenly they become comfortable financially and and everything goes a bit pear-shaped, bizarrely. And it's like, yeah, my God, what happened there? So when you hit that point, you know, you've got two choices. Well, we've got more than two, but for this podcast, you've got kind of two choices. You can try and figure it out for yourself. You can do some mind work. You you can go off and Google it and see what comes up on good old YouTube or whatever. Or you can work with somebody like me who can help you figure it out. Now, although number one is potentially the the cheaper alternative you know you might think that oh you do know what I've got the skills for that I know what I do I know what I need to do to sort that out um you know I I've done some training programs in CBT or I've done this and I've done that my question to you is if you have those skills why have you not implemented them now before now you know, we all have skills that we can utilise to kind of take our life if it's not working for us and change it into something that is. But 
we're not very good at implementing them when it comes to ourselves. We need a helping hand. So to give you an example, right, I've got a free course on my um, website, okay? It's a free seven-day How to Feel Fabulous course, I think is what it was called. So 39 people had signed up to it at one point. And how many do you think actually completed it out of 39? So this is a free training. This is something that somebody's looked at, they've signed up, they've gone, yeah, that's that's what I need. Two people completed it completely. Because I can see, I can see what people do. And I would say 28 people, I think it was, when I counted, when I just did that snapshot of a particular month, 28 people hadn't even started the programme. And the rest were sort of, they'd done a few, you know, maybe a quarter or a half or whatever. So yeah, there are there is free stuff out there. And you probably do have a lot of skills that you you need to start to make changes in your life to figure out where you are in your midlife crisis. But have you actually got the drive without having somebody to make you accountable for actually saying, do you know what? We're going to change, you know, you're going to change your life. We'll get that. Let's put some steps in place. Let's implement it. And then I'm going to hold you accountable. Not in a horrid way, you know, don't beat my clients with a stick or anything. But knowing that you have spent money, I guess, and knowing that you have um, committed to a relationship of sorts with somebody um, is a, is a big uh, driver. It really is. I mean, I, I'm working with, I have my coaches who help me with stuff. You know, I'm on a, a year-long business programme and a year long, you know, included in that is mindset and goodness knows what else. Because I know the benefit of it. If it wasn't for them, when I hit a little bit of a low or I'm feeling a bit, I'm going to say lazy, you know, I would just kind of wander off and do something else. But because I have made commitments to do things, then, you know, it's um, it, it's it's a really big incentive. Not just from the financial, you know, yes, I've paid for it. You know, and, and I think, you know, when you pay for a service, when you pay a decent amount for service you're more inclined to do it but anyway there is so much more I could talk about with regards to this you know losing yourself and figuring out who you are Uh, I think I might save it for another day I promise I won't leave it months like this time but I have been um, busy working on my business quite a lot so this has kind of taken a back seat so I do apologize so losing yourself And waking up one day and going, what the bloody hell has happened here? Who am I? What do I need to do to change? Or perhaps, and this is what I'm seeing a lot of, and like I say, I'm working with a lot of divorced women or divorcing women or women who have been in long-term relationships and split up, and men, I do work with men. And, you know, what I'm seeing a lot of is that they come out of a relationship and it's like shell shock, even if it was their decision. There's, There's like a shell shock. Because they, the, the realisation is they have, a, they have allowed themselves to be changed, is one thing. They have allowed their partner to nudge and mould them into the perfect wife or the or, you know, perfect partner. The other thing is they have allowed themselves to change. They have actively changed when... The other person hasn't asked them to, or you know, asked them, but you know, hasn't encouraged them to be a different way, because they've wanted to please and they've wanted to be this perfect person. Christ, I've done it myself. You know, they want to be a certain way to please people, to make people happy, and then, you know, the realization kicks in. Like I say, this midlife crisis where they wake up and they go, "Do you know what? I just this is just wrong. This is just fake. This is just a lie." And, um, yeah, and then they wake up and they go, what on earth am I going to do to get out of this? So if you are at that point, you know how to get in touch with me. Um, sue at suegw.co.uk. And I will pop the details in the chat as well, in the um, information. But like I say, you know, I work with, currently working with clients all over the world, literally all over the world. 
I've got clients in the States, I've got clients in South Africa, I've got clients in Australia, New Zealand. So, um, you know, I'm not just UK based guys. So if you feel that anything resonated with you and you need to get your shit together and you would like me to give you a hand with that, then feel free to message me and we can get on a call, um, a free call and we can see where we go from there. Okay, guys, thank you for listening.